Hello and welcome to the NBCC Environmental Technology Program Overview. My name is Linwood Dunham. I'm an instructor at the Environmental Technology Program and I'm going to run you through exactly what we do over our two years here in the Environmental Technology Program. One of the things that we like to do before we, we get students into the program is we have them wonder what are some of the current environmental issues? What are some of the issues that we will discuss in this program? So I wanted to take a few minutes into this uh, PowerPoint to discuss some of the stuff that we talk about while in the program over your two year period. Some of these pictures may look familiar. There's some typical environmental discussion points here, including deforestation, agriculture, uh, climate change down in the bottom left corner and, and fish mortality rates. We are seeing uh, we are seeing higher levels of, of fish mortality here, right here in the Miramichi due to increasing river temperatures in the summer. So these are some of the things that we will uh, discuss while you're with us in our program. The common thread of these four pictures is invasive species. And we're, we're starting to, to see, to monitor, to get involved a lot more in our world in invasive species. And in case you're wondering what these four species are, in our upper left, we have a smallmouth bass, which is an invasive species in many of the rivers in New Brunswick. Over on the upper right is the green crab. The green crab is found now in, in most of the eastern uh, portion of the province. We have purple loosestrife that dominates wetlands and chokes out some of the native plants. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we have a giant hogweed, which uh, can leave some some burns uh, if you come into contact with the sap of the plant. A few other things to consider here. We spend a lot of time in our program talking about water quality. And some things to consider is we, we, we don't just think drinking water, we also think recreation waters, wetlands. And uh, it's very interesting. In, in our province alone, we often have blue-green algae uh, outbreaks and you can see in the bottom left some of the algae outbreaks in uh, in some of the lakes across New Brunswick. So while you're with us you're going to spend uh, a lot of time talking about water and again whether it be recreational purposes, drinking purposes or again for assessment and monitoring in, in wetlands, rivers, lakes and so on these are the types of things that we do in our program. We are highly connected to our industry all industry needs environmental technologists to help monitor and keep under control some of the pollutants or some of the regulatory aspects that come with these industries. And I've put up a few examples on the uh, screen here in front of us, including uh, the St. John Irving oil refinery in the upper uh, left. On the upper right is the uh, local mill here in Miramichi. It's uh, Arbeck. It's a uh, wood or OSB uh, mill. The Beldoon power plant, and and we've even got some pipelines here as well. That and all of these things require environmental regulatory monitoring and also uh, compliance. And we have a big role in the industry when it comes to environmental monitoring. A couple of other things to get you thinking about. The environmental program, uh, mining. So we have a, a very busy uh, mining resource area in northern New Brunswick, and uh, this is a map of some of the uh, major deposits and sites in northern New Brunswick. The big one, of course, is uh, Glencore, New Brunswick, or Glencore, Brunswick, number twelve and number six. That's the the old Brunswick mine that ran for almost sixty years. It was a, a lead, copper, zinc mine uh, just uh, north of Bath or just south of Bath or Bathurst. And so we'll get involved in, in monitoring and understanding mine closures. And, and again, these are just typical topics uh, when you think of environmental technology. These are the type of topics that we'll be discussing over your two years. Now that we've spent some time talking about some of the, the topics of interest that we often end up discussing in the classroom or out in the field, uh, let's talk a little bit about the environmental job sector. It is one of the fastest growing sectors in Canada, and we expect a little over 100,000 environmental professionals, aka the baby boomers really, to retire in the next decade. That's gonna provide an ample opportunity for our graduates 
to move into the environmental workforce and uh, find a successful career. A lot of people ask, well, what does an environmental technologist do? What is an environmental technologist? It's a generalist in the numerous environmental disciplines, <clears throat> usually reports to scientists, engineers, or project managers. And some of our key roles are to carry out field work, no matter the weather, no matter the time, no matter the location. And that holds true in our program as well. We do a lot of field trips while you're with us over the two years. Uh, and we don't concern ourselves too much with the weather. A little rain is not going to stop a field trip to the nearby wetland or river uh, to do some, some field work with our students. We develop and we assess environmental programs and protocols, and we collect and analyze and interpret data, public relations, and consultation. So we get involved a lot with that, uh, that third one, the collect, analyze, and interpret data. So we'll collect it, we'll analyze it, and the big one with us uh, for technologists is we have the capability to interpret the data that we've collected and to give information regarding the data that we've collected. So what is an environmental technologist? I like to think of it as a jack of all trades, master of none. While you're with us in our two years in this program, you're not going to focus in on one specific task or one specific thing. You'll be all over the place. And that's what we kind of like about this program. Now, I joke about this with our students coming in, but something that you won't learn in environmental technology, we're often misrepresented as the tree huggers or the folks that are out in the Greenpeace boats stopping the whale hunt or, or out catching butterflies with David Suzuki in the fields. These are all great and important things, but they're not directly related to the environmental technology program. The key here is technology. And so we use technology, we use equipment to monitor, to collect, and to interpret data. The program itself is a two-year program, and again, our, our design is to train students to perform sample collection and monitor data management for the four major categories, air, water, groundwater, and soil analysis. And so we'll spend a lot of time on those four media, and our program is based around those four things. I should mention that all of these pictures that you've seen to this point are pictures of our former students, uh, pictures of us in the field, pictures of us on field trips. These are the type of things that we do. Instead of spending too much time in the classroom, although we need some, there is a balance, we tend to believe that hands-on education is the best way to go. And so when you look down to the bottom left, instead of talking about a, a river, for instance, uh, in the classroom, we prefer to put on a set of waders, head out to the nearby river, and spend the day talking about the river while we're on site. And that's proven to be a successful formula for our graduates uh, over the past uh, 27 years of this program's existence. We have three main foundations, including mathematics, sciences, and communications. We don't have a lot of mathematics courses, and in fact, we've only got one official mathematics course. We complement that, though, with a lot of in-science math uh, problems and problem sets. So built into those science courses and those environmental-specific courses, there is some mathematics. But technically, we only offer or we only require the one mathematics course. We do, of course, are, are heavily focused on the science program, so you'll see a lot of chemistry, geology, biology, physics and a lot of specific environmental science-based courses as well. And we also believe in communications. We want you to be excellent in, in reporting, in report writing, in presentation skills, the ability to research, and of course, computer skills as well. So ultimately what this, this program requires is a require, um, requirement of, of, of both the outdoor and the indoor classroom. It is important that uh, you do enjoy spending time outside. Who employs environmental tech graduates? I often say it's easier to say who doesn't. And again, it goes back to the jack of all trades, master of none. We have so many different disciplines in the environmental field that it is difficult to, to pinpoint exactly where our grads go. We have graduates uh, in the program at, or from the college, sorry, that have worked all over the Maritimes, all over Canada, and all over the globe. So the, the 
opportunities are endless if you want to travel abroad, if you want to travel through Canada, but if you want to remain here in the Maritimes, opportunities exist right here in New Brunswick as well. And we're confident in saying that there's opportunities in all sorts of environmental disciplines right here in New Brunswick. Some of the graduates of the Environmental Technology Program find employment in these four general categories. So when we think of industry, we think back to some of those pictures of the earlier slides, like the St. John Irving Refinery, or these large industries, again, that requires environmental technologists to, to look after that compliance monitoring, to look after the daily tasks uh, associated with running these large-scale industries. Environmental consulting is where many of our grads end up going. These are private businesses that, that fix problems is the best way to think of it. So if somebody has an environmental problem, they call consultants who come in and fix the problem. Now, when I speak of environmental consulting, they generally are part of a bigger class called engineering consulting. And within an engineering consulting office, you might have folks dedicated to mechanical, or to civil, uh, but within those offices, there's always an environmental group as well. And many of our graduates spend time working within these consulting offices. We have students that are involved and end up getting employment in the federal and provincial governments and also the municipal governments in departments like the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans or Environment and Climate Change Canada. Also, we see them in the Environment Department provincially, and we see them in Environmental Municipality Departments as well. So if you think of Moncton and St. John and Fredericton, these places all have environmental individuals or professionals that are working in, within these, these municipal governments. A lot of our grads end up going to non-governmental organizations or NGOs, and this is often where a lot of our students get their start. Uh, they are community-minded groups that do really great work within their respective communities. We have a couple of examples right here in the Miramichi called the Miramichi River Environmental Assessment Committee and the Miramichi Salmon Association, both of which are, are not-for-profit or non-governmental organizations that do a lot of great environmental work that's dedicated for the community and for the local watershed. There's opportunities for work everywhere. And these are some, some older examples, but I wanted to, to make my point here by saying, if you don't believe me, go ahead and Google environmental technology employment or environmental technologists under some of these career websites. And what you'll see is there is opportunity locally nationally and globally for those that want to travel a bit further. Now some of you may want to push your education further after your two years with us. And uh, one of the great things about college, and one of the great things about NBCC is our ability and our partnerships that we have with universities right around the Maritimes, but also across Canada as well. So the, the point of this one here is, is you don't need to no longer choose between, should I go and get a diploma or should I go and get a degree? And in fact, while you're with us, you can actually get your diploma and degree in as little as three years. I know the slide said four years, but there's a couple of other universities I'll talk about in a second. The, the opportunity that exists currently right here on this slide we're discussing is the one at UNB, the Environmental Science Program at UNB and New Brunswick or NBCC's Environmental Technology Program. So you get two years with us and you leave here with a diploma. And then you get to walk into UNB's Environmental Science Program and you will enter into the third year and will be able to finish your degree in those two extra years that you're at UNB. So essentially you get a diploma and a degree in four years. Now, we don't advocate that students need to go to university beyond our diploma. In fact, we're very confident that, that many of our graduates have been very successful at just getting and obtaining the diploma here and then heading straight to the workforce. But we wanted to provide you the examples and show that if you're looking for additional training, there's opportunities there. Here are some of our additional 
credits and opportunities for, for university. So we have advanced credit standing at the, the following universities, including Cape Breton University, where they have a Bachelor of Engineering Technology. So it's a one year program. So you leave here after two years with us and you end up with a, a degree in one additional year. Same as Royal Roads University, where they offer the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science. That's a, a university out in Victoria. And uh, this is uh, where I went and actually did my education as well. So as an instructor of this program, I should mention that I, I was also a student of this program at one point in time. And uh, after graduation and some, and some time in the, the workforce, I went back to school and I took advantage of this opportunity at Royal Roads University in Victoria, British Columbia, where I was able to obtain the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science in just one calendar year. For the real adventures, folks, we have opportunities and agreements with Griffith University in Australia, where you can go over for about a year and a half and walk right into the Bachelor of Environmental Science after graduating our program. A couple of other examples we have, Memorial University and Lakehead University, and we're adding to these all of the time. So the great news is for those of you that want to find additional educational opportunities, they are there for you and we can help you as you come through our program. Just wanted to briefly touch upon some of the first year courses uh, while you're with us. And this is just highlights a few of them. I don't think it mentions all of them, but you'll see uh, some core sciences, including uh, geology and chemistries and physics and biologies. You'll also see a little bit of specific courses like environmental law and sampling methodologies, geographical information systems where you'll learn about maps, ecotoxicology, a little bit of writing, some communications, and of course, some field skills. We'll spend some time learning how to carry that canoe that you see up in the left-hand corner. We have some, some specific certifications in canoeing, wilderness first aid. And so if you like to be outdoors, we offer some unique certifications that will, will help you both in your career, but also in your, your private life if you enjoy these recreational activities. Some of the second year courses. So this is again, I'll just, I'll just stop quickly and talk about the, uh, the picture that you see. This is salmon brood stocking. This is one of the things we do with MSA, where we go out into a, a river way upstream into the headwaters of the Miramichi and we, we pull these nets across and we get a couple of students in some, some wetsuits that push the salmon into these nets. And then we, we capture these salmon for the Miramichi Salmon Association who then run them through a brood stocking program. So worth noting, I think, because it's an exciting day for the students and myself as well. As you see in the second year, we begin to really hone in on, on specific environmental courses, things like environmental education and restoration and, and environmental remediation and industry and environment and air quality, oceanography, water quality. You can see we're really honing in on the specific skill sets. And what we, what we do that, or the reason why we do that, is we give you guys an opportunity to sample some of the different environmental sectors and see what interests you, what piques your interest. And from there, you can then begin to decide where my career wants to go. Your final term with us, we have a couple of things to cover off. You have a five-week work placement or work practicum where you have the opportunity to go into the workforce and do a five-week work placement with any of the, the environmental sector uh, uh, companies that you're interested in doing. You're also going to do a year-long multidisciplinary project on applied environmental topic too. So that's going to take a uh, course over your second year. You'll pick your topic in the fall and you'll work through that research project through the winter and into the spring. And that will, will culminate in a, a presentation at the end of your second year. Things that we want you to consider when you're here is, I mean, this is certainly not to downplay high school. We understand the value of high school, but there, there is a, a little bit more expectation uh, as a college student. Some of the onus on the work is put on to you and it's important that you take that seriously. And so that's why we say treat it like a job, not a vacation. Come to class when you are when you're, when you can and uh, we find students that, that make it to class, come to the classes and do their work and there is, there is a little bit of work in this program. There's a lot of time for fun as well. But those that come to class, do their work, that's a, that's a recipe for success 10 times out of 10 for the students that come into to this program. 
really the only restriction that I can think of when it comes to the employment of an environmental technologist is their willingness to move for the job. We have employment rates of over 90%. And uh, as you can tell, really the, the biggest restriction is your, your ability to be comfortable, say, moving around in Atlantic Canada. Well, there's a lot of opportunity, say, in some of the larger municipalities in New Brunswick, like St. John, Fredericton, Moncton, and then as you move out into Nova Scotia and PEI, Charlottetown, and, and Halifax, and so on. So those are where the opportunities exist. We have accreditations uh, in our program. So we're accredited across Canada and internationally under two designations. We have what's called the Professional Technologist designation under the New Brunswick Society of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists. And you also have the ability to become an environmental pres sorry, environmental professional nationally under Eco Canada's EP designation. So that about sums up the program and uh, I hope you enjoyed the overview of environmental technology, some of the things that we do, some of the things that we'll, we'll teach and some of the things that we'll talk about while you're in the program with us. If you have any questions about this uh, program or about some of the topics that we talked today, feel free to reach out at the email below. Uh, that is my email. So again, I'm Linwood Dunham, one of the instructors. I'd like to thank you for your time.